Hey everybody, welcome back to another co-branded video for Ideology and Madness and View from the Cheap Seats. I'm here at Universal Studios tonight for another Halloween Horror Nights experience. This time we have a uh, RIP uh, media tour along with a special face-off media event. And I'm covering it on behalf of Ideology and Madness. Link below. Please check out the site. All the video that you see tonight will go along with a written write-up and some additional pictures that will be posted on the site as well. Please check them out. They've got a ton of information um, that they've accumulated over the first few weeks of Halloween Horror Nights, including lights on tour pictures and some behind the scenes stuff. So awesome things. Check them out. Follow them on Twitter as well. This is their Twitter account. Links down below as well. But I want to give you a quick overview of the event and there's no better way to do that than turn it over to, uh, to Mike Aiello and Laura Wallace from our entertainment team, from our art design team. And Mike will start with the houses and Laura will tell you a little bit about the secure zones. Cool. cool. Alright. Hey everybody. Hey. I see a lot of familiar faces out here though. <laughs> Who's been to the event already? Woo! Awesome. Who has not been to the event yet? Alright. Welcome. <laughs> I'll focus over here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Mike Ayala. I'm the creative director for Halloween Heart Nights 24. And uh, year after year, this is our 24th uh, year doing this thing. And every year is all about uh, a, per a perfect blend of uh, intellectual properties, horror properties that we bring to life as well as some original ideas that we bring to the table for our guests to, to see and experience year after year here at the event. And uh, this year's probably one of the biggest slates we've ever had uh, in a long, long time. Uh, Walking Dead is back for a third year. Uh, it is the largest maze we've ever done with the most characters inside we've ever had. Uh, 60 plus walkers inside our Walking Dead maze this year. And it's all about season four. Uh, anybody see the new, new season premiere happen this past Sunday? It was awesome. It was too cool. Uh, but yeah, our maze is set in season four, so we, we end right at that at that um, that plot point, that plot twist about Terminus, you know, when they get siphoned into that uh, that, that container. Um, we've got uh, the maze is based on the L Ray Network's TV show Dust Till Dawn, going very well. We've got a maze based on, it was just released, I think, last weekend, I guess, uh, Dracula Untold, which is a kind of a retelling or a reimagining of the legend of Vlad the Impaler. Um, so our maze is based on that. Uh, original mazes this year are, are, are just awesome. Probably one of the creepiest mazes we've ever done uh, in, the, in a long, long time is uh, Dollhouse of the Damned. Uh, any doll you can picture in your head, creepy doll, uh, an environment that you can picture is inside this maze. It's probably one of the fan favorites, I think, for the event as far as one of our original mazes. Uh, so we, again, th this event always runs the gamut with very unique visuals, very unique characters. Um, and the mazes are, are, are no different. They are, they are all uh, uniquely different uh, and placing our guests in very vivid, nightmarish environments. Uh, but I'll let Laura Wallace, our show director for the street program, she'll talk about uh, our scare zones this year. Scare zones are returned. And uh, we'll give you a brief overview yeah, of those cool. things. Um, we were very excited this year to kind of go back to our roots of scare zones. Um, we had stepped away for a couple of years trying all kinds of different things out, roaming hordes and um, last year being an overall kind of scare zone with Walking Dead. So we were really excited to come back to that kind of our roots with the four very unique scare zones. I'll talk about the two original content scare zones first. Um, we have Masquerade, so when you first walk in the park, what we wanted to do is go really big so that you would see that statement from outside the park. So there's a huge chandelier there, it's kind of flickering on and off. We have these huge candle pieces um, where there are, some, there are some body parts and heads stuck in that wax candle. Um, to me, what I love about Masquerade, it is beautifully scary. And I think sometimes horror can be really beautiful. And what what we've done over there with the the, the costumes are gorgeous. And then there's the, all these bloody like masks that have been ripped off their face and left that blood mark where their skin has been ripped off. So again, it's just beautifully horrific. Um, right in front of us as you walk out these doors, you're going to um, encounter our uh, Bayou of Blood. Um, there we have a voodoo queen that's kind of brought all these followers with her to this bayou. Um, they are all there to uh, basically make sacrifice to her. You know, that she's trying to have this ultimate evil. So it's very aggressive. Um, all kinds of interesting looking people in that, that environment. All kind of really cool, interesting things in that environment. One thing that we really loved over there is we wanted to do something like we had in years past with our jack-o'-lanterns that used to hang in the trees. So this year what we did over there are um, jars. And if you look close enough, that each jar has something different inside it, whether it be a toad or a spider or a finger or an eye. Um, sometimes you can see it, sometimes you can't. Those jars kind of flicker through the trees, which is just a really cool thing. 
Um, we anchored the other half of our park with two very awesome intellectual properties. Um, in New York, we've taken over the whole back lot of New York with um, Purge, Total Anarchy. We celebrate both Purge movies um, with some of our Purge one kind of polite more polite uh, murderers, and then, <laughs> <laughs> polite murderers, <laughs> why not? Um, and then in Purge 2, we're, we're, um, we're recreating that auction piece that happened out there. So there's a little bit of a show element where we do auction off people, and we take them away, haul them away in a bread truck, and there's uh, motorbikes over there, and there's chainsaws. So it's just a really horrific zone where everyone is really trying to kill you, and you don't know who is, who's a purger and who's not, really, and that's what makes that cool. Um, the last one that I want to talk about is the one that we're really celebrating here today, which is Face Off in the Flesh. Um, absolutely beautiful scare zone, but again, very, very scary, because we have these, um, we've done our replications of these beautiful Face Off creatures, um, put them on five beautiful vignettes, and then those around you in the street are really the ones scaring you. And we allow these vignettes to be photo opportunities for our guests. It's been just absolutely amazing. We have a lot of face-off makeup artists and winners here um, that have worked with us at Universal for a very long time. So it was just a really awesome moment to have them come back and work here and, and show off some of their prize, you know, winning um, kind of creatures as well. Yeah. And, uh, and so with us today we've got uh, Eric Garcia in the back and Doc, they're doing some makeups right now, you guys can photograph and talk with them uh, later. Uh, right now we'll uh, let Laura Tyler come up and talk about her experience here but also on the show Face Off. Yeah, for those who don't know me, my name is Laura and um, I was a season 5 finalist, oh, I'm sorry, I was a season 3 finalist, season 5 winner Face Off and I've had the great privilege of both working here and then going on to that reality TV show, working on um, all the creatures on there, and then coming back here and again being able to work with uh, the designing and the sculpting of some of the characters that we have out on the streets. So this couldn't be more authentic from the reality TV show to now as you I mean, it's as authentic as you possibly can get. You got real um, face-off contestants working on them, uh, at, at applying the makeups uh, during the day, and then you know, before pre-production, we have all uh, me and a few others actually sculpting the prosthetics beforehand as well. And you'll get to see a uh, few of them. They range from all the seasons, from seasons one, and I think they're on through season uh, six, but uh, they're on season seven right now. And, I think uh, Face Off is going to continue, so it's a great brand to have, especially for Horror Nights. Uh, something just for the guests to come in and take pictures with, and I couldn't be more proud, really. I, I'm, I'm very excited to be here and uh, get to not only be a fan, but also get to work on the creations and watch them and the whole process come to life. So. The really great thing about, about that show is that it really does for the first time in a long time, really show the artistry that goes into creating these horrific characters. The show does a brilliant job of displaying that. And yeah, it's a reality show. It has, has all the drama of a reality show, but at, at, its, at its core, really showing um, the amount of work and talent that goes into creating a lot of those things. And the fact that we've got a lot of our makeup artists who worked with us even prior to that show and being in existence, being able to be on that show and, and be featured, and now kind of full circle with many of their characters now featured in the event that they've created. It's a really cool kind of full circle story that, that uh, we're really proud of. Yeah, it's a little peek behind the curtain. Yeah. I think that's I think that's something that a lot of people enjoy watching is the creative process. And, uh, the end product is here in Horror Nights every year, but to see you know what it was the creation of the drawing and what you guys do creative and then bring it to full circle mm -hmm. and finally see it. Yeah. It's a good process. Good, yeah. good and that, fun. That's the thing about the event is we, you know, every year we strive to try and do different things and bring different visuals and nightmares to our, our guests who, who love to come year after year and, and attend and see something new and different. That's the other thing about this event that I think that we're real proud of is that every year it does change from, from the top to the bottom. I mean, it is a different event from the ground up every single year and that makes it unique. And I think why our guests keep coming back year after year because they know they're going to get a different experience every year. So we're really proud of that. I'm here talking with Mike Aiello, creative director <laughs> of Halloween Horror Nights. We've got a couple of hard-pressing questions. Oh no! Okay. <laughs> All right. Hard pressing. Here we go. All right. 
Um, closing ceremonies this year? Anything special planned? Oh, uh, maybe, maybe. If there were, I wouldn't reveal it because uh, uh, you know, uh, obviously, you know, Bill and Ted. The last show of Bill and Ted's always the, uh, the show to see. Sure. Um, but yeah, who knows? Who knows, man? Any maybe nods to Twenty Five in the closing? I don't know, man. I don't okay. know. Right. Yeah, these are these are really hard hitting because I have <laughs> ones I can't answer. <laughs> All right. So, um, for those that have been here for multiple weeks. Uh -huh. And then there's folks that have not been here for yeah. weeks. What's changed over the weeks that maybe the folks that haven't been here mm -hmm. for a few weeks, mm -hmm. what would entice them to come back? Oh, um, well, yeah, the, the, we're always tweaking and changing the, the content. You know, it could be little things, it could be major things. You know, the, the, some of the places where our characters are placed inside the mazes will sometimes change up based on what we're finding guest flow to be. Um, we're always like tweaking makeup and changing, you know, but it's a lot of. It's a lot of little things, like we're affecting lighting and some audio cues, audio levels based on what we're finding is working and not. Um, but a lot of the change occurs after that first weekend. First weekend to second weekend, there's a, there's a huge, huge change that occurs in the event, because it's our first time to actually get guests through the, uh, through the mazes. Sure. We've worked with a lot of properties yeah. at Universal now through Halloween Horror Nights. What is left that you haven't worked on that you want to work on? What's the dream? Oh. Because this year, I know Halloween was the dream. Yes. Yeah. What's after that? Uh, that's a tough one, too, because it could, <laughs> it could actually happen. Um, you know, the, the, the one thing we always like to do every year is, is, is if, if we're able to have at least one maze that kind of pays homage to the horror's past. Okay. You know, there's, there are a ton of horror films that we have not, that we're huge fans of that we have not tackled yet. Um, there's a lot of Clive Barker stuff out there that we haven't tackled yet. There's a lot of, um, hell, even, even, you know, some, some uh, doing a Night of the Living Dead type maze that, you know, paying homage to Romero. You yeah, know? I think it, that would be amazing. That would be cool. Yeah, yeah. There, there's so many. I, I think I mentioned another interview, and they, I haven't seen it yet. I think it came out. The Town That Dreaded Sundown. I always loved growing up as a kid seeing that. I don't know. Have you ever seen it? No. Oh, it's, it's <laughs> definitely of its time. But the only way, reason I remember it is because the, the mask was very reminiscent of, uh, of the original Jason look with the canvas sack. Okay. This guy, you know, runs around and kills people in that sack. And then, uh, and then there's a trombone kill that he does that was always, I always remember that as a kid growing up. That was just the most creepy thing. But actually, it got remade. Or there's a sequel, I guess, that came out. Blumhouse is putting it out direct to video, I think, okay. um, this month. Uh, it's a, I haven't seen it yet, but I love that original movie. So yeah, there's, there's, there's tons, man. There's tons of things that we would want to tackle that we haven't yet. Okay. We're here to talk about scare zones. Mm -hmm. So, and specifically Face Off. Yeah. And I think Face Off is, is a great scare zone for what it is. There's mm -hmm. a lot of photo opportunities. Yeah. And there's, you know, I think the distraction of while you're taking photos, yep. folks coming up to you. And last year we had the, the scare zones that were just completely bridged across Walking Dead. Yes. And the year before was roving scare zones. Mm -hmm. So now that we're kind of different things three years in a row. Mm -hmm. Is there a preference as to what you think you like best or would want um, to see? Personally, my, my personal opinion as a fan of the event, I enjoy scare zones. I, I, I really enjoy putting the guests into uniquely different environments that we are able to set up in the park. Um, not to say that we wouldn't try some new things or go back to things we've done um, on, a, on a, so that, that's my opinion on a sure. professional level. Um, I think, I think We've got a nice toolbox of different applications that we've been able to do. Um, is it a combination of certain things for next year? Possibly. Um, but uh, how about expanding scare zones? Like you know, I think that definitely there was a, a huge opportunity for additional clowns maybe in the San Francisco area. Sure. That yeah, yeah. You have a, 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 a fairly sizable gap, I think, in yeah. between Bill and Ted and getting over to Giggles at this yes. point. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it, we're, we we always try and, and occupy as many places in the park that we're able to given the year that we have. Um, but yeah, we're always looking at trying to figure out ways we can expand and improve the event. Okay. I think I've asked you this every year for the last three or four years too, or since The Simpsons came about. Yeah. Treehouse of Horror, any, yeah. anything? It's awesome. Like, it's, a, it's a great, great episode. Um, nothing that we could create. <laughs> I don't know, man. These are questions I can't. I, I can't thought these are the hard hitting. Questions. I know, I know. I can't because okay. you're. It's very specific. And are we or aren't we? Yeah. Um, those are tough to answer, man. We asked you the easier questions during the media event. Yeah. <laughs> I think the, the last one is, um, what is the thought on like a year-round haunted house? Because I think you know there was one thing one day maybe two weeks ago that I had we went by Monsters Cafe. Yeah. And of course now my daughter is like 14, 15. Yeah. And. 
she's in love with the classic characters. Yeah, they're, they're Creature of the Black Lagoon could not be a bigger movie for her. Oh, cool. They would go in the, the Monsters Cafe. Oh, is she a fan of all oh, three? She loves, yeah. you know, so we, we go in and the thought kind of hits you like, what about like a year long haunted house? Mm -hmm. You ever yeah, think that no, that might be a Yeah, no, it's a great idea, man. I mean, <laughs> yeah. The, 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 the cool thing about it is, is, is all of these ideas are things that we bring up a lot. And it's just a question of, of what, what, what's the business need? Um, you know, what does the theme park need? Uh, and also, too, not make, making sure that we're not pulling anybody away from a Horror Nights event as well. You sure. Know, that, that's always, a, a, I think, a decision that, or a factor in a decision like that. Sure. I think that was it. Cool, man. Now we made you sweat through the first thing. Ah, oh, no. <laughs> that's all right. So, that's Mike Aiello. We're holding up the line here. <laughs> Sorry about right, that, bro. Mike. Thank you so much, you, man. Absolutely. Thank you. My pleasure. take to uh, get the makeup off after it's actually put on? Well, this one, it depends on the piece, but this one, I mean, it takes like 15 minutes. Oh, okay. So the solution that we brush in and zip out to mix the And then how comfortable or uncomfortable is the, the prosthetic? It's a push so it's, it's been a getting used to it then? Yeah, the first couple of times it's a little uncomfortable and you have to get used to the way it plays and the motions of well, it. I mean, it's, and also it's like an extension of This piece head. isn't really sculpted to his face. Okay. So it's going to not sit the way it should maybe sometimes. Gotcha. Because he puts it on. So I mean, if it was an actual piece sculpted from his live cast, then everything would be like, should be where it should be and it will be able easier and be a little bit more comfortable. Yeah. But it's definitely getting used so how do you feel seeing the face-off product come to life in the I, scare zone? I feel amazing uh, about it. Um, I don't know if you know this or not. I worked here in 2001. It was my first job back when I was 16 or 17. And to see, you know, it be here at the very beginning, of my career and then go on to the show and then to have one of your creations to get picked as a design and then to get to sculpt it yourself and uh, you know get watch watch people apply it every night and then even get that fourth kind of three-dimensional moment where the performer performs within it and scares other guests. It's it's very surreal and I'm very humble. It's a very unique right? perspective to see it come kind of full circle. Yeah, it really is. It's, it's, it's kind of weird, but it's it's a good weird. What were some of the biggest things that you were able to take from Universal and apply it to the competition of Face Off? Being a makeup artist here at Universal Studios is like... Um, because you have to do so many makeups all night. You know, you're cranking them out one after the other, and you have to do them quickly. You have to do them well, and you have to learn all the tricks. So I don't think I would have gone this far in the show had I not already been prepped from working here so many years. What have you learned from working in like the frenetic pace of Face Off to bring it back to the event here? for Halloween Horror Nights? Ooh, that's a good question. <laughs> I think I've learned um, a lot about like about design choices. Um, when I went on the third season and got to the finale, the only thing that I... Well, there's, there's lots of those things, but of course, but the only <laughs> one thing that I kept coming back to um, was design work. 
conceptual design and being able to create a character from top to bottom, including the outfit, because on that show, you're not just designing the makeup, you have sure. to design the overall look, and they do judge it on the overall look as well. So coming back to Horror Nights, not necessarily being responsible for the makeup um, and, and the costume and all the whole thing, but having a new appreciation for the creative development side of the event and seeing all of the work that goes into the drawings and the sketches and the costumes, everything that doesn't involve the makeup sure. is much more appreciated than I think. Do you have particular favorites in the zone? Uh, in, in, in the face off zone? Yes. Well, I have my character there. I can't really call out a favorite. <laughs> so, I mean, it's because it's mine. Um, it's from the Deadly Sims Challenge. It's from fifth season. Um, the one that I sculpted and designed was the, it's the bloodiest one. It's the bloodiest character I think I've ever done. <laughs> and she's got like the, her fingers coming up in here and she's ripping off her own face. Um, but beyond that, you know, gosh, it, beyond that, being, being favorite. That's walking around, it looks like a spider hole. I can't describe it any other way. It's got like four eyes and big giant horns. Okay. I got to sculpt, re sculpt that, but it was just fun. It was fun to re sculpt it. I think it was a character from Six Season. Okay. It's just very imposing, intimidating character walking around. It looks so good outside when you get to see it in person. Awesome. And I guess last question: Any tips for folks that are looking at the show, or they come to horror, you know, they come to horror nights? It's overwhelming to see how much work goes into it. I think when you take a step back, instead of just looking at it at face value, and there's a lot of folks that actually, whether it's reading our sites or looking at vlogs or things like that, that kind of wonder, how do I get into this? Mm -hmm. You know, any tips for aspiring horror well, folks? What I what I did to get into this uh, back when I was uh, still in high school. Uh, I worked uh, at my theater a lot. I volunteered my time. I was in their art program, but after school, I went to the theater <laughs> class and just did as much makeup on as many volunteers as I could find. So that's my best advice is just, you know, don't let there be an excuse. Just get out there and do it and start practicing. Practice okay. makes perfect. Awesome. I think that was it. I can see Doc is doing makeup on other folks. Someone down on the end got their forehead done up with makeup as well.
We are completely going against the flow here. They're like salmon. We're following that pumpkin of power to Roanoke. Hey, so we're actually inside Men in Black on the floor. If you see up, that's where the queue is. And we got seats down here. And we got aliens. So let's take a selfie video. Selfie video. So far, our IP tour, amazing. We've done the three back houses, Roanoke, uh, Dollhouse, Halloween, and at Giggles and Gore. Giggles and Gore, amazing this time. There was two uh, spots with scare actors that came out. And the first clown again uh, said hello with a little wink. Thank you so much. And the, um, one of the scare actors in the Dollhouse that knows us said hello as well. Thank you very much for uh, continuing to watch. So I hope you're watching today. You guys are awesome. Dollhouse was amazing today. I still think Dollhouse number one house. Halloween, second house. And, um, you know, can't say enough so far. The tour is amazing. If you guys have the ability to uh, afford the RMP tour, I would highly recommend it. If you can't do RMP, I would definitely say Express is the next best option. By the way, I don't know if I've expressed this, but I'm drinking the beer inside Men in Black on the floor. Those are the aliens. I think I've said this before in vlogs that I've always wanted to come down here. This is amazing. Check out his site also, I'll put a link down below. We'll see you guys here after the show. Intense tonight. I think tonight everything really clicked. Awesome. Really enjoyed the show. And I actually can't wait to see that again the next time that we come. I thought tonight was the best show that we've seen so far out of all the times that we've seen it. We're headed into the purge. And we're gonna do the sound stage houses. Transformers. Somebody has to save the universe. We're going to Super Express to get our Transformers through the back door. Hey, we're in the child swap area. That's pretty cool. Guess what? The media just saved the freaking planet. That's right. Me, Ed, from Agent Ed Crypt. Get it. You can thank us later. By the way, we're still following the Statue of Pumpkin here. Pumpkin of Liberty, give me your tired, your weak, your huddled pumpkin spice lattes. There was just a scare actor in the purge in a wheelchair. That's really cool. Those officials rating 10 or higher must remain unharmed and any message over I think we're heading to Dracula. There you go, it's the Van Halen scare zone. We did Aliens vs. Predator and Dracula again. Aliens vs. Predator, we saw a couple predators that were really tall. I like that a lot. The house was really great today. Dracula, same as always. Eh. But the funny thing about Dracula, and I don't think I've mentioned this before, some of these houses really envelop you with the smell of a situation, not only the uh, visual. And there's one room in that Dracula house where they have cookies laid on the table and it smells like gingerbread. I love that room. They're going back through the purge again. These are the easiest targets. They think they're protected. They look like they kind of victim. Check out these neat posters going through the backstage area. Everybody went on Mummy for my favorite ride, but I decided to sit down in the child swap area instead. My back is killing me. And we've been enjoying Mummy cartoons. Who knew? Walking dead tonight, I got the feeling that we caught it during a cast change because there was a lot of people that were missing in their spots. So I can't 
give the house a very good rating as a result. But I think generally speaking, the house is pretty good. Nothing new jumped out of it tonight. It's, like I said, a bunch of spots where your clubs were missing. By the way, that girl that's running around over there, she is one of the hardest working people here, without a doubt. She runs like crazy. Still our favorite. No! Oh, as long as I get to be somebody's favorite. I had a gentleman come through today and he made himself a shot with my face. Oh really? On it. Yes, it was my face. He hand drew my face on it. It had something a little fun on the bottom. It was crazy! That's awesome. Somebody thinks I'm important enough to have my face. That's a new level. A new level. A whole new level of fun, if you ask me. <laughs> Perhaps I should sacrifice him next. I think that would be good. You could sacrifice him too. <laughs> he seems a little too okay with it. I don't like it when they're so willing. More fun when they're struggling. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm finally back home. It's about 2.30 in the morning and the RIP media event for Face Off was just really phenomenal. I want to again suggest, um, if not this year, next year, if you have the means to do the RIP tour when you go to Halloween Horror Nights, by all means, uh, do it at least once. It's really phenomenal that you're able to get right to the front of the line. It's different than Express. Express is awesome and I will always suggest using Express instead of waiting on uh, you know an hour to two hour lines to get into each of these houses. Um, but the RIP tour gets you right in immediate access and it gives you um, premium seating for the shows as well. Um, it's really worth, worth the, the money that they charge for it. Um, Tonight was great seeing a bunch of folks uh, from the media that I'm used to seeing or don't get to see it, uh, enough, um, as well as the folks that I got to spend time with after the media portion ended. So the face-off um, scare zone, hopefully you guys got to see everything that was in there um, and can appreciate all of the, the work that goes into um, building the characters that are in that scare zone now. One thing I wanted to say again, um, just a reminder, this is in conjunction with Ideology and Madness tonight. So again, check out the link below. Go to the site. Um, what I'm going to do on the site, and I'm not going to do on video, is I'm going to rank my houses that I like this year from um, best to worst. I don't even though there's really not really a worst, because I think the whole event is fantastic. But I want to rank the houses in the order that I think that they should be ranked in, um, according to me. It's my own personal preference and give you some reasons why, but that's going to be in text on the site for Ideology Madness. Link here. Um, so um, please check that out and, and check those guys out. Um, tomorrow I believe um, Tim is going to be checking out um, a different uh, media event for Halloween Horror Nights for Ideology as well. So Tim's actually going to write something for the Ideology site, which is really super cool.
Before I forget, what was really super awesome tonight is that the temperature is kind of uh, broken here a little bit, right? So I'm looking at the monitor. You guys can't see it here, but that's my wallpaper. And the monitor says it's 63 degrees outside. That was really great weather instead of sweating to death when you're walking around outside um, the houses. It felt fantastic. So it's just a super night all around. Um, but enough of me yapping. Um, thanks for all the likes, the comments, the subscriptions. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Have a great night. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching.